Coffee Break Italian, Season 3, Episode 28. Buongiorno a tutti, benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Ciao a tutti, e io sono Francesca. Come stai Francesca? Bene, buon anno, dovrei dire. Sì, buon anno, buon anno. Come stai? Co- cosa, hai fe- cosa hai fatto durante le vacanze? Ah, beh, sono, sono tornata in Italia per un paio di settimane, ho rivisto la mia famiglia, i miei amici, ho mangiato un sacco, non voglio neanche iniziare a raccontare quanto ho mangiato. Ma eh, bene, bene vacanze. Sì, ho mangiato bene, sì, ho ricevuto dei bei regali, sono andata a sciare, ah, e che bello. tutto perfetto, <ride> guarda. Eh, dimmi, hai qualche proposito per l'anno nuovo? Eh, sì, <ride> ma non voglio dirlo al mondo. <ride> va bene, va bene. Allora, il mio proposito okay. è non bere tanto caffè. Ah. Ma il problema è che oggi... Ero molto, molto stanco. Ok, e quindi? Ho bevuto un caffè no. per avere un po' di energia, okay. per registrare questo podcast. Ok, ma... E va bene adesso. Va bene? <ride> sì. <ride> sì. Allora, bando alle ciance. Bando alle ciance. Diamo inizio alle danze. Allora, di che cosa stiamo parlando oh. oggi? <ride> ma che cosa è questo? <ride> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a, a, a new... Uh, maybe San, Santa brought me this new machine for wow. Christmas. Um, but it means we can introduce some 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 good sound effects, shall we say, if if we get uh, something right on the, the translation challenge. <laughs> Or um, perhaps if we go wrong in the translation challenge. Ah, devo dire agli ascoltatori che non sapevo nulla di questa, di questa novità del 2023, una sorpresa anche per me. Ma una piccola sor- sorpresa, questi, Mi piacciono sì. molto questi effetti sonori. <laughs> well, we will leave it there. Okay. I don't want to overuse it, don't worry. We're not going to make Coffee Break Italian turn into some kind of uh, comedy show. <laughs> Va bene. But I asked a question and I asked a, an important question using an important uh, element given the 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 <laughs> what was that oggi parliamo del gerundio of course the so gerund. the gerund sì. this is a, an element of italian grammar we have similar things in english sì. but their uses are different in each language sì 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 it's like um a, a verb that we have seen in the previous episodes the series so i think most of our listeners can recognize it but we have never really looked at all the details uh, of uh, the gerund. So we can start uh, by looking at the structure, at the formation, and then we can see how we can use it in Italian, what we can express with it. Ok, va bene. Allora, la struttura è molto facile, molto lineare. <laughs> I'm looking for my clap button. <laughs> sì, 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 we need a clap there. <laughs> Okay, as always, we are looking at the three conjugations. So for verbs ending in are, as always, we uh, remove the are ending and we add ando to the stem. Okay, so if we take amare, we would get amando. Perfetto, o parlare. Parlando. Sì, guardare. Guardando, sì, molto facile. molto facile. Uh, for verbs of the second conjugation, verbs ending in ere, we add endo, ad esempio ridere. Ridendo. Sì, o prendere. Prendendo. Sì, o ancora scrivere. Scrivendo. Perfetto, perfetto. And the ending endo is also used for ire verbs, for verbs of the third conjugation. So there is no indo ending as someone might expect, but it's the same endo. So uh, dormire. Uh, dormendo. Sì, o aprire. Aprendo. Finire. Finendo. Sì, so the verb isk don't have yeah. an isk in, uh, in the gerund. Okay, now, of course, like all verbs, there are uh, situations where there are irregularities with the gerund. Sì, but very few, and as always, the usual suspects, but very, very few. Ad esempio, bere. With bere, we introduce the v again. So just as we have beviamo and so on, 
We would say bevendo. Bevendo, sì, dire. Same scenario here, we get dicendo. Dicendo, bravissimo. O fare. Facendo. Sì, or some verbs, uh, those ending in uh, double R, e like tradurre. That would be traducendo. Traducendo, bravissimo, mm-hmm. bravissimo. Uh, but there are, there are not many irregular verbs, so it's good news. Okay. And we can use uh, um, the the gerund as we have just seen. We can also form, and this is somehow the present, uh, we could say, we can also form uh, the past tense uh, of uh, the gerund. Mm -hmm. Can you guess how we form uh, the past tense of the gerund? Well, to have the gerund in the past, we simply need the gerund of the auxiliary verb plus our Famous past participle. Perfetto. And even essere is regular in the gerund. So, essendo or avendo Mm -hmm. plus the past participle. So, having spoken, avendo parlato. Sì. Or um, having gone. Sì, in Italian, being gone. So, essendo andato. And then, obviously, we need to think about the endings. Essendo andata, for example, if I'm speaking about myself. Essendo andati or essendo andate. Benissimo. Okay, so we just practice a few more gerunds just to get into the yeah. swing of things. Yeah, sounds good. Ad esempio, dare. Dando. Dando. Eh, partire. Partendo. Molto bene. Sapere. Sapendo. Sì, perfetto. Eh, avere. We've seen that one, avendo. Molto bene. Ballare. Ballando. Sì, e we will also seen essere, but as a reminder. Essendo. Essendo. Nascere. Nascendo. Mm-hmm. E ancora uno, fammi pensare, pulire. Pulendo. Pulendo, bravissimo, bravissimo. So this is how we form mm-hmm. the gerund. What about actually using it? What's the function of the gerund? Yeah, it's really interesting because uh, uh, the gerund can have like quite a lot of functions or express like different uh, uh, meanings uh, going together with, uh, let's say, another sentence. Uh, usually when the two subjects uh, of the of the two sentences going together are the same, mm-hmm. then we're likely to use uh, a sentence with the gerund. Okay. And as always, maybe with some examples. Uh, That will make more sense. Okay. So we can use, first of all, uh, the gerund with the idea of uh, while doing something. So instead of mentre plus, let's say, a more normal mm-hmm. uh, or a conjugated verb, we can use the gerund instead. Okay. Ad esempio, ascolto il podcast camminando. Okay, so I listen to the podcast, comma, <laughs> walking, while walking, while, while walking, doing something. Yeah. Sì. It's important to, uh, to mention here that the person who is listening the podcast, io ascolto, is also the person who is walking, mm-hmm. camminando. So, because obviously the gerund doesn't have... Uh, each individual person, Mm -hmm. that's why it's better if it's used uh, together with a sentence whose subject uh, is the same to avoid uh, ambiguity. Mm -hmm. And just to mention there, of course, you can listen to uh, Coffee Break Italian episodes while you're walking. esempio a caso. (laughs) (laughs) When you're you're driving, Mm -hmm. guidando, uh, while you're at the gym working out. Mm -hmm. Sì, sì, fare esercizio in palestra, quando sì. portate il cane a passeggio. Sì, esatto. Sì. Tutti questi pos- tutte queste possibilità. Tantissime, infinite. Ok, let's look at other examples then of when we would use the gerund. Ok, we can use the gerund to uh, tell how we do or something has been done. Mm-hmm. Ad esempio, ho superato l'esame studiando giorno e notte. So, I passed the exam by studying day and night. Perfetto, sì. Um, in a couple of episodes ago, we uh, discussed, we introduced uh, if clauses, mm-hmm. so sentences using se plus the um, subjunctive to describe hypotheses or possibilities. And we can kind of avoid using if plus the subjunctive and replacing it with the gerund. I think that almost needs a round of applause. Sì, that sì, sì, sono d'accordo. <laughs> a good way to avoid the subjunctive. So give us an example of this. Ad esempio, potendo. 
lo farei. So, being able to, I would do it. Sì, so, sì. So, that's to avoid se potessi. Se potessi, sì, okay. sì. So, again, the subject is the same. I'm the person who is doing and I'm the person who could. Mm-hmm. So, we can replace se potessi with potendo. Okay, in the same way, we can use uh, uh, this, let's say, strategy to avoid if clauses also when we are talking uh, about the past. So as a replacement for the pluperfect subjunctive. So in this case, we don't use our present gerund. (laughs) There's not really such a thing as the present gerund, but we use it in the past. In the past. So if we take the same sentence, but we want to say, If I had been able, I would have done it. So that would become then not potendo, but avendo potuto. Perfetto, sì. And we also need to change the second part. Mm. Lo avrei fatto. I would have done it, yeah. If I had been able to, I would have done it. Avendo potuto, lo avrei fatto. Molto bene. Um, Another couple of things we can use the gerund to uh, describe, to introduce the cause or the reason for something. So again, as a replacement for the more common visto che, dato che, poi che. Mm -hmm. Ad esempio, um, avendo perso il treno, si è fermato a dormire da noi. So this is, I guess, similar to English, you know, having missed the train. Mm-hmm. He stayed at ours for the night. Sì, sì. And we could have said, visto che eh, ha perso il treno, mm-hmm. but we have this alternative. Yeah. It's a nice little tool in our toolbox to <laughs> esatto. use to ex- expand our, our range of, of expression. Sì. E l'ultima funzione molto interessante è the use of the gerund preceded by pure which often is abbreviated as pur, so P-U-R, mm-hmm. pur. And pur plus the gerund convey the idea of although, despite. Ah, right, this is new to me. Mm, bene, sono contenta. So give us an example of that. Possiamo dire eh, Paolo è uscito pur avendo la febbre. So Paolo went out even though he had a fever. He was, sì. uh, he had a temperature. Sì, 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 sì. Okay. Sì, pur sì. avendo la febbre. Pur avendo la febbre. Oh, ok. Good. È carino. Sì, so pur è as a, as a short version of pure. And is that used in spoken Italian? Sì, sì, you could say it. Uh, maybe it's not overly used, but mm-hmm. you can use it in, uh, okay. in spoken Italian. Good sì, sicuramente, know. sì. Um, as I said before, normally uh, these sentences work better when the subject of both clauses is the same mm-hmm. to avoid ambiguity. If the subject changes, uh, maybe they become a little bit uh, um, heavier mm-hmm. or not as straightforward to, to understand. It becomes a bit complicated okay. um, who does what. So, ad esempio, um, avendo Giulia finito di studiare, io sono andata a casa sua. Right, so there you're saying, with Giulia having finished studying, I went to her house. Sì. I see what you mean. It sounds a little bit complicated. Eh, sì, è un po' pesante. This uh-huh. sounds very uh, kind of bureaucratic and uh-huh. more... Uh, strictly used in uh, written Italian, for okay. example, in a law mm-hmm. or very serious matters. Okay, right. But normally when speaking, you wouldn't use a, such a, a heavy mm-hmm. <laughs> structure. Mm-hmm. So how would you get around that in speaking? Uh, you would just say, visto, uh, che... visto che Giulia aveva finito di studiare, sono, sono andata, andata a okay. casa sua. That sì, makes sense. Sì. Makes sense. Okay. Good. Va bene. Eh... Well, when we started the episode, you used uh, uh, an interesting structure <laughs> that we can also um, use with the gerund, mm-hmm. which is a stare mm-hmm. plus uh, the gerund. Yeah. And that gives us our kind of continuous tense, uh, the, the continuous present in this case. So, stiamo uh, imparando, we are learning, mm-hmm. or sto mangiando, sì. I am eating. Sì. Or we can change the tense and say... 
stavo mangiando. Yeah, so I, I was, was uh, eating. Sì, yeah. sì, sì. This is really useful. We just have to remember uh, not to translate literally from English uh, into Italian because obviously in English we use the verb to be mm-hmm. plus the gerund and we have to make this effort of uh, switching to stare, stare. Mm-hmm. in Italian. Okay. And does the gerund have any other functions? At times you can find the gerund with the verb andare. Okay, so what would it mean in that situation? Uh, again, it's very similar uh, to uh, stare. So mm-hmm. there is the idea of uh, something in process, but it's more like something that happened, that has already happened in a moment that is not uh, specified and it's still ongoing. It's mainly used for set phrases like uh, la gente va dicendo che eh, Giovanni non abita più qui ad okay, esempio so people are, is it the idea of people are going about saying that sì, sì, okay. sì, sì. so they are saying it mm-hmm. uh, but they also started uh, in the past and they're yep. still doing it uh, just I see. now You're right okay so there's yeah. a kind of ongoing scenario sì, there sì, sì, double sì. ongoing <laughs> we've got sì. the va and dicendo sì. oh, la notizia va diffondendosi pian piano right so the news is is spreading out sì, gradually sì, okay sì. interesting <laughs> now we're going to see lots of examples of the gerund in our conversation coming up and that will be after the break <laughs> In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break Italian Season 3, we are also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your Italian. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode in which we'll go through every detail of the dialogues and a third episode for each lesson in which Francesca will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the lesson topic. Of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakitalian.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Okay, today we are looking at the gerund and its many uses. Francesca, we've got a a dialogue coming up. See, in this dialogue, uh, we have uh, two colleagues, uh, uh, Carlo and uh, Tiziana. They are at work uh, in the office and Tiziana comes across as, as someone who is really interested in the environment. She wants to do something to save the planet, whereas Carlo is not as uh, interested, as involved uh, as she is. So she's trying to teach him a few things that she considers important. Va bene. Allora, ascoltiamo la conversazione. Ma cosa stai facendo con quei fogli, Tiziana? Come cosa sto facendo? Queste fotocopie sono venute male e dobbiamo rifarle. Però non voglio certo sprecare tutta questa carta, quindi sto mettendo i fogli in un contenitore apposta per il riciclaggio della carta. Non sapevo che ora fossi così attenta all'ambiente. Sto semplicemente cercando di fare piccoli cambiamenti che potrebbero portare a grandi risultati. Questa mattina, venendo al lavoro, ho sentito un ambientalista che parlava alla radio. La situazione è davvero tragica e, se non agiamo subito, le generazioni future pagheranno per tutti i nostri errori. Dicendo così, sembra che sia tutta colpa nostra. Ognuno di noi ha un pochino di colpa. Pur non rendendocene conto, siamo in qualche modo colpevoli. Secondo me, la colpa è solo dei politici. Sono loro che hanno in mano il destino del mondo. Non è vero. Tutti noi possiamo fare qualcosa nel nostro piccolo. Ma come? Ad esempio, riciclando carta, vetro e plastica. Oppure non comprando cose inutili, utilizzando di più i mezzi pubblici, spegnendo la luce quando non ci serve e così via. Beh, io spengo sempre la luce. 
bravissimo Carlo, ma capisci anche tu che non è abbastanza, solo facendo uno sforzo congiunto e apportando dei cambiamenti radicali al nostro modo di vivere, possiamo salvare la terra. Potendo, io farei tutte queste belle cose, ma la situazione non è così facile come la descrivi tu. Sì, realista, Tiziana. In che senso? Ti faccio un esempio semplice semplice. Se vengo al lavoro in auto, ci metto al massimo 25 minuti. Con i mezzi pubblici, ci metto più di un'ora e mezza, non contando il fatto di dover stare il più delle volte in piedi e in un ambiente affollato e rumoroso. Che esagerato! Non è vero. Credimi, ci ho provato. Ma avendo avuto più di un'esperienza negativa con gli autobus di questa città, ho deciso di non usarli più. Vado a pieni piuttosto. Ah, ma questa è un'ottima idea, Carlo! Mi stai prendendo in giro, vero? No, Carlo, sono seria e dico solo che l'inquinamento va aumentando a vista d'occhio e io sono seriamente preoccupata. Per questo motivo ho organizzato una riunione dopo l'orario di lavoro per discutere con i colleghi come stiamo gestendo il riciclaggio qui in ufficio e quello che potremmo migliorare. Le soluzioni si trovano solo scambiando idee. Ecco un volantino con tutte le informazioni. Ma, Tiziana, hai sprecato un sacco di carta per questi volantini. Mandando l'invito per email, avresti salvato almeno un albero. Oh, mamma mia, che spadata! Non ci avevo pensato! Come dico sempre io, sbagliando si impara... Molto interessante. Sì, sì, sì. Eh, mi immagino questi due colleghi eh, a gennaio, all'inizio dell'anno, che si ritrovano in ufficio. <ride> Un yeah. po' come noi, così, che <ride> chiacchierano vicino alla sì. fotocopiatrice. <ride> ok, so, uh, we will go through this in detail in our bonus episode, of course, but at the moment let's just talk a little bit what has happened in this discussion. Ok, sì. Uh, we start the conversation in Carlo, uh, approaching Tiziana because um, um, he just notices that she's dealing with some paper. That's right. She explains that she's recycling some photocopies that didn't come out nicely in the first place. And Carlo is surprised uh, because he didn't know that Tiziana cared so much about the environment. She's just trying to do her, her fair share. Uh, this morning on the radio, there was an environmentalist who was saying just how bad the situation is and how responsible we all are. But Carlo doesn't really seem to agree with this uh, uh, statement. Mm-hmm. And he says that, in his opinion, only politicians are to, uh, to blame. But Tiziana goes on to say that every one of us uh, has an individual responsibility to, to become involved and to, to, to improve things. See, and she also lists uh, uh, things that we can all do to help the environment. Uh, for example, recycling, uh, not buying useless things, uh, using public uh, transport and switching off the lights. <laughs> Carlo does say that he always switches off the lights. <laughs> <See? laughs> But uh, Tiziano points out that that's, that's not enough. See, she thinks that a joint uh, effort and radical changes uh, are required. Okay, so Carlo understands, but then he gives the examples of public transport to show how, in practical terms, what's, what Tiziana suggests is it's not always easy. See, for example, uh, going to work by car saves him, saves him a lot of time. Uh, not to mention the fact that he doesn't need to stand, something that he doesn't like, <laughs> and be surrounded by a crowd, by a lot of people. <laughs> uh, Tiziana thinks he's exaggerating a bit, but Carlo would rather walk to work instead of taking a crowded bus. See, Tiziana makes fun of him a little, I should say, and she just says uh, that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he asks her not to make fun of him. He, he doesn't, doesn't want to be treated like that. Yeah, but she's actually uh, serious about it. Uh, and she's organizing a 
um, a meeting after work to discuss with their colleagues uh, how to be more environment friendly at work. And she hands uh, Carlo a leaflet. Mm. <laughs> Carlo then makes a point. He says that <laughs> leaflets are a waste of paper and she could have just circulated an email. <laughs> sì, ha ragione, devo dire, Carlo. <laughs> Tiziana simply hadn't thought about it and Carlo finishes by saying that you can only learn by making mistakes. Using a beautiful <laughs> expression we've spoken about many, many times sì. on Coffee Break. Sbagliando si impara. Sì, sì, sì. Una bella espressione con il gerundio, sbagliando. Esatto. Well, that is almost it for this episode. However, before we finish, I think there perhaps is ancora una cosina. Sì, c'è una cosina molto, molto breve, molto mm-hmm. corta oggi. And today's cosina is linked to one of the protagonists of this episode, which is La Carta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And uh, it just came to my mind a nice idiomatic expression we have in Italian to describe that it's important to have things written down on paper so mm-hmm. that you can prove for example that something had been agreed mm-hmm. or said and in Italian we just say carta canta so paper sings si 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 so is this kind of like in English where we say it's better to have something written down in black and white or si, something like that si that's the idea that's the idea or when things are set in stone in stone yeah. si nice. so if someone is telling you no I didn't say that or mm-hmm. I didn't agree to that and you have it written on paper you can just show that sheet of paper and mm-hmm. say carta canta <laughs> <laughs> do you know the other week a couple of weeks ago I was out for dinner with la signora Gloria ah. And uh, we were rather rudely told by the the restaurant manager that um, the table was required um, because there was a big group coming in. And uh, I had my email confirmation saying that they needed the table back by, I think, quarter to seven. And uh, the restaurant manager was telling us at quarter past six that they needed the table. So I got my email out. Mm-hmm. I could have said carta canta. Carta canta, sì, although it was il telefono, no? <laughs> il telefono canta. <laughs> sì, 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 that would have been perfect. Yeah. If I had printed out that, but then that would have been a waste of paper, so, you know. Sì, sì, hai fatto la cosa giusta, Mark. <laughs> We did manage to see on and finish our meal. Ah, oh, bene, sono contenta. Salutiamo la signora Gloria allora. <laughs> Spero che ascolti. Sicuramente. Allora, abbiamo imparato molto in questa lezione. Sì, abbiamo imparato molto, come sempre, divertendoci e ridendo. <laughs> so, uh, having fun and, and laughing. Sì. <laughs> I promise we won't be using these in every episode. No, è solo perché è l'inizio del nuovo anno. È sì. di buon auspicio. Esatto. Allora, è tutto per oggi. Grazie mille e alla prossima. A presto. Ciao, ciao. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>